Right, so Maxine, obviously that was then and this is now. So what happened in around, whenever it was, let me think, uh, 2020, 2020, what happened? Yeah, question. so first of all, what I would say is I found myself in the beauty industry purely by default. Um, and I was like, whoa, I'm in the beauty industry, that's weird. And I looked around who was the governing body I wanted to be recognised by? There's a governing body in all of our sectors, and it was CW, and I, I set my North Star at CW. I thought, right, that's what, who I want to be recognised by, and to win that award was just amazing. And they really are professional and just love them. Um, so where are we now? So, God, I think all we've ever done is get our head down, put our head down, get on with the job in hand, and put the consumer first. 100% the absoluter comes first. Everything we do is for the absoluter. You know, I now have... A, so what happened is the business grew. We, we were still eight people in our house, which was really bizarre, shipping from our garage. It's crazy. And then I kind of thought, okay, the business, very arrogantly, when I started... And this is so arrogant to admit. When I started Absolute Collagen with my, my daughter, I said to her, I want to be in and out in three years. I mean, so arrogant. <laughs> I hadn't written a check for 25 years. It was so arrogant. And um, three years came, and I looked around at the team. I looked at the business. Couldn't let my absolutes down. And I said to the, my very young, hungry, capable team, what do you want? And they went, we want more. And I went, okay, then we have to seek investment because we've got all this money in the bank because we kept the money in the bank. We never spent it, which our investment team were like, that's Never heard of that before, but it was never been our money. It belongs to absoluters, and it's all about how can we best serve them. And so, going for investment was we need. I needed a strategic. I needed strategy, and I've never run a business before, and nobody else in the team had. We were all working on instinct. We were all working on all we ever have to do is the next right thing. It's that simple. Put the consumer first. Build a brand. You know, it's not about just about a product. And so it was. We we went for investment on some advice of how do we spend this money wisely? And that might sound really, really stupid, but it's really, really important, you know, that you get it right. And part of that was knowing that me saying to the investors, I will not be CEO going forward. So when the investment came, we had four offers on the table. It was very hard work, by the way. I didn't do anything. Darcy and the team did everything. Um, I just went out and found people and brought them back, you know. Um, and we have four offers on the table, and it was quite a decision to think, who do we go with? We never went with the investor with the most money. We went with the investor that was most human, because that was really important to us. We need to wake up every day, know our absolute as a paramently first, but also have some fun, for God's sake, you know? We don't want to be turning up in suits and being very serious, because that's not me. I can't, you know, I'm serious about my absoluta, I'm serious about my business, but let's have some fun along the way. And that's what we've done, and that was December 20. Um, so it was never about the money, it was about us as a family taking money off the table and bringing strategy to the business, and that's what we've done. And bringing the CEO in has been incredible. Um, that was a very hard hire, um, because we needed somebody who was an absoluta, somebody... When I say an absoluter, who are absoluters? They're everyday women. Uh, they just get on with the job in hand. They roll their sleeves up. They're not precious. And I needed that person to be like that, you know? And we've chosen very, very wisely. And, yeah, it's, it's massively great fun. And it's really strange because you don't see the journey you're in because you're in it. Massive. And what have been some of the other changes since having that investment? You've got a massive team now, a big well, warehouse, yeah. a sort of reception area. Yeah. What? Yeah. <sighs> so we've got a warehouse. Um, we don't manufacture, but we pack. And the reason we don't manufacture is we don't want another business. You know, a manufa I want uh, the manufacturer to be the best they can be. Um, and in order to do that and to cross all the T's, dot the I's with the uh, food standards, because the, the products are food, they need to really be up at their game. And I don't want another business. So we, we, it, we choose the ingredients, we choose the manufacturer, we build fantastic relationships. We've had uh, relationships with everybody since day one and we still use them now, which is great. We've got an office in Birmingham, 50, 50, team of 53, and it's absolutely crazy. And I guess the one thing I didn't say is absolute collagen is run on the power of sir. 
And what sir means is every absoluter deserves to feel safe, important, and respected. And that runs through the absolute core of our business. And that's internal facing as well. So that means every team member is treated with the power of sir, and they must treat each other with the power of sir. Um, and yeah, it's just, oh, we have board meetings and chiefs this and chiefs that. It's all a bit confusing. And <laughs> Darcy will often look at me across the tables and say, do not open your mouth. I know my place in this relationship. And that's fine, you know. I, I, I know I cannot be at the helm because it would be too responsible and we've just got an amazing team. And new product is just incredible. And Maxine, can we talk about some of the things we've talked about in the past about running your business with instinct? Because actually yeah. you did that all yeah. along. And I think one of my memories of working with Maxine for however long, three or four years, was that you did always apply instinct. So for instance, we would say things like, Maxine, you know, why don't you increase the price? Because yep. you know, then you can get into retail and you know, you'll get the LTV through quicker and, and, or at least do some price testing. And you were very clear about that. So you have always operated that business with a degree of instinct. Do you want to tell some people yeah, tell some more about that? I, I think more than I ever thought, actually. So, um, and you can really see it in hindsight, actually. Yeah, the decisions very much in hindsight. So I set the bar for the collagen... Um, for the price of collagen supplements and when I first started a couple of people really challenged me and said why don't you put 10 pound a box on that you could do that really easily and still sell it and I just said yeah why why can't I it just didn't feel right it was just I couldn't do it and I really had to spend two weeks wondering why that was because make an extra 10 pound a box is what we all want right but it just didn't feel right and so I kind of went into myself and this is where I think being an older woman, uh, being a mother comes in because you do have this kind of, you, you can look at yourself and you can kind of look at your instincts and your intuition. And I went back to my childhood and it took me back there. It took me two weeks to discover that I was that six-year-old little girl walking around these wonderful shops with my mum in, in the centre of Bath. And my mum was a single mother with no money and wondering why my mum could not afford the things that other mums could. So for me, it had to be for the everyday woman. It was just, beauty should not be pocket deep. And it, it just, it frustrates me a little bit looking at the men's, uh, the guy from Warpaint. A lot of his things were a lot less expensive than women's. It still happens now. Um, and yeah, so, and instincts is a funny thing because can a business be run on instinct? No. Right, The brand was built on instinct. It's now run on strategy. But I am still the person when the data comes in, because data is hugely important. So when the, And I've only just kind of discovered that. When the data <laughs> comes in and the decisions are made, I'm the one, I, Darcy and I are the, the people that take the temperature of that decision. So yes, that's what the data's saying, but you cannot build a business on data alone. You need to understand your consumer. And this is where a brand comes in. You need to understand what they want. You know, I met somebody really weird. I was at the at Scarfell Pike the weekend, and this guy came up to me. I thought I was in the middle of nowhere. And he said, you're Maxine. I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> and he said, you know, he'd, he'd started a supplement business, um, in, I think it was two years ago, and nothing was happening. And he was getting frustrated. And I'm like... Yeah, it was two years, you know. You've got to give it time. You've got to give it your all. You've got to believe in it. You've got to live it. You've got to love it. And if you don't do that, there's no point, I don't think. And Maxine, it's so interesting because Maxine does now get recognised everywhere that she goes, on trains, in restaurants. Can we talk about your personal brand and, and, mm. and the role that's played? Because one of the reasons, well, we when we kind of created it or evolved it, it was A, because I thought you were really cool, had some great things to say, but also, unlike lots of brands, you didn't have loads of assets. It's like, mm. brilliant, let's bring you into it, talk to yep. the camera, tell your stories. We even did a day in the life that started Maxine sitting in her bed, didn't it, <laughs> yeah. in the morning, and Darcy sitting next to her, which is not what happens every day. It was day. like, it was, when you watched it back, first of all, it was like I was in a care home, yeah. and Darcy was like <laughs> tucking me in. <laughs> so both of them sitting up in bed together. Oh, it was lovely. But, and that was another great before. You that thought was we were going really to show that today. Actually. And you brought that out in us, definitely. No, but what was the difference it made? Be having your personal brand in the advertising and in the absolute collagen story, what difference? It made, it made you... a massive difference, but it's really difficult to do because I'm, believe it or not, I'm quite humble. I'm not looking, but I am. And as a, as, a, as a family, we're really humble. And we struggle with that sometimes because sometimes you've got to shout really, really loud and you've got to know when it's your time to shine. Um, and so when Tash was sort of saying, you know, you've got to come out, of, come out, you know, be, be, be the brand. And I was like, oh my God, this feels so wrong. And then seeing yourself 
in on camera all the time. You just think, oh my God, this feels really vain. I don't like it. I didn't even look at myself. In fact, one of the funniest things was when we were working from home back in, when we first started working with Tash, Darcy, we just started doing creatives of me and them. And Darcy was opposite and she just cried with laughter. And I was like, what are you laughing? She went, this guy on Facebook, he just said this. And I was talking about absolute collagen and this guy had put a comment saying... Um, oh, I know what you're talking. Oh, I wouldn't buy a product from somebody that resembles Gary Glitter and Cruella Deville's love child. <laughs> I remember that. And we were just <laughs> howling. And actually, do you know what? I mean, you can we can laugh at that because I it doesn't bother me, right? And we actually Darcy messaged him back saying, "Yeah, I've got to sit opposite all day. I I feel." But if you're 20. But you don't want to hear that, right? So I think if you're going to put yourself out there, you've got to realise that some, you're not going to like some stuff. But you just got to see beyond that. And, you know, I always say to the... I see myself as a third person. It's like I'm a different entity. And you know, we're looking at creatives. And my benchmark is always my children, right? Whatever I write, whether it's a blog, I'm writing a book at the moment, whether it's uh, creatives, if they're happy... I don't even need to see it. <laughs> it's irrelevant, what I think. If they're happy, then it goes out. And I guess as a family, that really works for us uh, because it's, it's sense-checked and I don't have to look at my face all the time. Jesus, who would have thought a 56-year-old would be the face of a brand, a beauty brand? It's a bit bizarre, really. With loads of wrinkles. Love them. <laughs> so what's next for Absolute Collagen? Obviously, you're going to become a 100 million plus yeah. brand. What's next for you guys? Yeah, and it sounds a bit arrogant saying you want to come up, become a £100 million brand, but it's all about the absoluters, and we've got their backs beyond belief. You know, they are front and centre of every single decision we make. And we have, in the beginning, we had people say to us, you must bring out m much more products you could, you could sell, they trust you, they love you. And I said, yeah, but we'll never bring out a product unless it works. We're not just about bringing out products. And that's difficult. That's a very difficult decision when you know... If, you, you know, if you've got 20 absolutists in front of you and you know whatever you try and sell them, they're going to buy it, to say no, we're not ready is really difficult. And so we launched... So everyone was asking for topical. Um, so whatever we do is going to be collagen-based or, or um, contain collagen. And so Darcy worked for a couple of years on a collagen-boosting serum for the, for the face, and that went down incredibly well. And then we've just launched our hair range, which is collagen. And that is, we're just blown away by that. We've won awards already and it's just, it's just unbelievable. And, you know, I think that's because there's a lot of science gone into it. Um, and how we came about that product, the, the, the shampoo and conditioner, the hair range, was having a relationship with our absolutists. And I'm not saying we're not going to be omnichannel because we're definitely looking at it. Um, if we respect our absolutists that much, we need to be where they want us. So that's why we're looking at it. Um, but having been direct consumer for so long, we've got a fantastic relationship with our absolutists. And, you know, gorgeous. We use gorgeous. We absolutely love gorgeous. <laughs> we use them all, actually. The only thing I do wish is that Recharge and Shopify would communicate lots more. <laughs> Anyway, but that's probably why Ryan's not here. Um, but Maxine, that's another thing you did instinctively. So actually, before, you know, Gorgeous was a thing. I don't know if Gorgeous was a thing. No, it wasn't point. then. Was Gorgeous even a thing? No, and Maxine was, they were doing one-to-one -one community management from the off, which is another thing that Maxine felt really, really strongly about. And yeah. really maintain, you did from the outset, yeah. push through. You know, no one, we, we didn't know about one-to-one -one community yeah. management at that point. I, I mean, you, you were doing it. We didn't know how key it would turn out to be to the success of you and other the DTC yeah. brand. I actually think the, the thing I'm most proud of is I have changed the consumer, the direct consumer market. I've, 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 I've absolutely shouted that customer service has to be key. And that's because, you know, when I went online before I had my business, I would reach out to brands and they'd never get back to me. And I was like, I never, ever, ever want one absolute to go unheard, unnoticed. I think we've got a five-hour... And we were busy, right? You know, it's a five-hour response time now. But that, that sounds like crazy to me. I want it to be two minutes. But, you know, when you've got thousands of clients, you can't do that. And it is really, really important. You know, they, they are your bread and butter, and they deserve your attention. And I just think if you take your eye off the, off, off the end user, you, you will fail. So, yeah, that was really important to me. Brilliant, Maxine. Thank you so much. It's such an honour to have you here and to have been, so been, been a part of your journey since you stood in front of me with the yellow box. The woman with the yellow box. I'm going to give Tash a big hug. <laughs> Thanks, Maxine. <laughs>
<laughs> Thank you. Brilliant. And I can I, and I, I, the one thing I'd like to say as well is Bolt are I'm not I'm not doing a sales job for Bolt here. I know, I'm like... But they were brilliant and they are brilliant and you know we would not be the business we we are today without Tash, Steve and their team and that's that's no understatement trust me. Thank you Maxine. Thank you. Right, Steve.